Well, folks, just hours to go before tonight's big Fox News debate, and a lot of eyes are on Ron Paul. He is making a big push to win over caucus goers here in Iowa. His campaign events here are packing in some of the biggest crowds. Polls show he is in the running right now to take the top spot on January 3rd. And Congressman Ron Paul joins me live right here. Congressman, it's a pleasure. Thank you Thank so much you. for being here. Thanks for having me. How are you doing it? Because these, these folks showing up at your rallies, it's not just, you know, older folks, younger folks. It's a mix. You seem to have energized uh, folks across the, conti the continuum. I don't know exactly what has happened because I've been saying the same thing for 30 years, but all of a sudden, you know, there's a lot of excitement. I think it's the conditions of the country and the conditions of the world because my policies have all been the same. I've been saying the same thing, but there's a lot more enthusiasm. But I think, sadly, it might represent how bad off we are in this country. The economy is in shambles, and I had talked about that and warned about it. And uh, foreign policy, I've wanted a different foreign policy because I was always afraid we'd get bogged down, and I thought we went to war too carelessly. And and the American people now statistically are with me on these things. They want the Federal Reserve audited. They want our troops to come home. And they don't like going into wars carelessly. So I think the issues have come around. And, but also, the enthusiasm is building. The money's coming in easier. We have more volunteers. And we have a better staff now than we did before. So it's all coming together. And uh, we feel pretty good about it. They, obviously, the, the support is ginning up behind you, in particular here in Iowa. But you mentioned foreign, po foreign policy. Right. That has been a big question mark w about you. And in your campaign and, and folks talk about in particular your stance on Israel and how you, you know you say you're not going to step in if Iran gets the nuke and Israel's on its own and you know that that is anathema to many conservatives yeah, it's interesting that you say it's the problem, and I see that as my asset, because when I go around the country, and when I go to the campuses, this is where I get the loudest applause. They're tired of it. 65% of the American people want us to come home from Afghanistan, even higher than that. So I would say that uh, it's not a problem. Uh, I'm not denying the fact that there's still a lot of people in the Republican Party who are much more anxious to go to war than I am. Uh, but all I'm doing is defending the conservative the constitutional position that you go to war infrequently and when you do it you do it deliberately under a proper authority which is a declaration of war you fight these wars and you get them over with but uh, so I don't think that's an unpopular position uh, and I think the Republicans are now very frustrated especially now because the foreign policy is being run by Obama and it's a lot easier to attack his foreign policy well and you talk about Obama foreign policy and how bad things are in the country right now do you think that any of those of the GOP candidates who are going to be on the stage tonight could beat President Obama. Oh, yeah, I think uh, I think all of us would have a very, very good chance because, you know, the country's very down on it. And, you know, in, in some ways, I see this a little differently in a different perspective because I don't see Obama as the problem. I see our problems as, you know, monetary system deficits been run up, uh, economic policies of the last 40 years. Republicans and Democrats have been in charge all that time. So uh, when we've been Republicans have been in charge, we didn't do such a great job. And that's why the independent movement is so strong. That's why there's a Tea Party movement and an Occupy movement because of this frustration. So Obama hasn't done anything to help, but he did not. He's correct when he said he did not create this monster. This monster, the seeds were sown in 1971 when we delinked our dollar from any restraint by a gold standard. That meant we could spend endlessly, run up deficits endlessly, print money endlessly, but there's always an end point. And what the American people have to wake up and realize, we're at that end point now. And if we don't admit that, we can't solve our problems. The, the race has been very interesting to watch as an outsider, as somebody in the media, and, and here in Iowa in particular, because you get deluged with ads. Not so in New York City, I can tell you that, but here in Iowa, yes. And one ad we see over and over is, is an ad that you're behind that's going after Newt Gingrich. We have a little bit of it for the audience to watch uh, in which you accuse him of hypocrisy. Let's take, it, take a look. Everything that Gingrich railed against when he was in the House, he went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. He's demonstrating himself to be the very essence of the Washington insiders. It's about serial hypocrisy. Now, do you mean that? I mean, you know, you're just you're telling me that you think any of the Republicans could win, including, I presume, Newt Gingrich. So do you really mean yeah, that? I think the country is so bad off right now with the uh, conditions. They want a change. So if the Republicans offer change, yes, I think every one of them would uh, would have an opportunity. But that's a tough ad against your fellow yeah, Republican. Yeah, I even forgot to put one in there because I but, think. But, that, but, but some people think that's mean. Iowa's, Iowans don't like negative campaigning. That's a negative campaign well, I think ad. There's a different, negative campaigning is calling people names. Demagogues 
leapfrogging the issues and misrepresenting people's views. But to point out, you know, different positions, that's my responsibility. Hypocrisy, <laughs> though? Did you yeah, go too far? I, I think when you flip-flop around, but, you know, there was one other issue that I personally found uh, annoying is that, you know, he's probably as aggressive with the military as anybody. He supports all the wars in the Middle East a thousand times more than I would. But, you know, when uh, in the 1960s, when I was drafted, you know, in the military, he got several deferments. He chose not to go. Now he'll send our kids to war. But at that time, he said that uh, one person wouldn't make a difference. He didn't know how he could make a difference. So I see that as important information. People should know that. And it reflects on him. We're, uh, we're up against a heartbreak, but I want to ask you very quickly, what's your plan for tonight? Tell the truth. Going to be good old Ron Paul. Tell the truth. And that's the easy way. They never accuse me of flip-flopping. <laughs> Congressman, thank you so much. <laughs>